With Kevin Kiermaier likely being Toronto's everyday center fielder on opening day, is Michael Brantley a good fit as a fourth outfielder? We'll break that down. And Buck Martinez has hinted that he'll be back in the broadcast booth, but had some choice words for Rodgers. We'll also talk some Lourdes Gurriel Jr. All that and much more coming up on this episode of Jay's Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Vrionis, alongside host Nick Goss. we got a lot to get into today. First, I want to thank you all for the support. It's been unreal. We're on the road to 5K subscribers by Christmas time. we got eight days. Eight days for, I think, 500 more. So it's going to be a time crunch, but it's looking real good right now, and we want to thank you all once again. Yeah, support's been unbelievable. You guys have been killing it, and I uh, hope we can continue that way, and we'll uh, keep pumping out these uploads for you. But let's just get right into the first topic of the video, which is a potential big move coming and Peter, you touched on it in the intro. It is revolving Michael Brantley, or also, you know, a type of outfielder like that. So this was a, um, a report from Shida Beattie. It says, if the Blue Jays do expect, or do the expected, and add another left-handed bat, perhaps to play some outfield and contribute at DH, it should help cover more of Hernandez's lost production. Followed by Ben Nicholson Smith notes in one of his articles uh, slash podcast saying, sources say they've shown interest in, uh, in Conforto, Brantley, and Gallo are still on the radar. So we're going to be focusing on Michael Brantley because his name has popped up in a couple more reports over the past couple days and speculation out there, especially with the um, Kevin Kiermeyer news that uh, that he is going to be our starting center fielder, according to him. And uh, yeah, Blue Jays told Kevin Kiermeyer he's the everyday center fielder in 2023. No talks of platooning. So if that is the case, Brantley makes a bit more sense because he can't really play the field anymore. What are your, uh, what are your thoughts on that? I'm going to go off the grid here, and I might get flamed a little bit in the comments. Go for it. Go for it. I really don't care. Uh, but I think Joey Gallo is a better fit than Michael Brantley, and I'll tell you why. So if Kevin Kiermaier is your everyday center fielder, you're relying on a combination of him and George Springer to cover 162 games worth of innings in center field. Both of those guys have injury history, and I don't feel confident at all putting Michael Brantley in center field if one were to go down. Because I'll give you the scenario. Let's say George Springer goes out with an injury, like 10 games, like a like a typical George Springer injury uh, like he goes out for yep. 10 games. So then Michael Brantley, uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Kevin Kiermaier has got to play 10 games in a row in center field. I don't think so. I, I don't, I don't have the confidence that he'll be able to do that. At least if you're getting a guy like Gallo or even Conforto, but I don't think Conforto wants to be a fourth outfielder. So that won't work. So if you're getting a guy like Gallo, at least he can cover some innings in center field. If either of those two guys go down, whereas if you get Brantley, you're putting a negative defender in center field. I know he's a better hitter, much better hitter than Joey Gallo, but I still think you can't go into the season with just those two center fielders that are so injury prone. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. People are actually discussing that on Twitter as well. The same thing you were saying. And if it's between Gallo and Brantley, you kind of just have to pick, like you said, because Brantley is a negative defender at this point in his career, especially in center field. And uh, he's probably bullet below average in the corners as well. But he is a great hitter. Has been his whole career. Great. He hasn't had an OPS below or OPS plus below 100 in the past however many years. Maybe had one season in his career, and he's just you know an unbel and would fit phenomenally in this lineup if only he could play the outfield. and They could trust him in center field. Gallo is a phenomenal plus defender. However, obviously he had his he's had his struggles hitting, especially the past few years. But at the same time, you know Gallo's ceiling. We've seen it. He's a 40 plus home run hitter. So it's going right. to be very very interesting to see. Um, and I don't know. Brantley is uh. uh it's tough. I think I would probably take Brantley in a nutshell, but again, it depends. And if you take Brantley, maybe you make another roster spot for, you know, Bradley Zimmer type who, uh, you know, another guy that you can trust in center field. Like, like it's, it's all about flexibility for me in the sense that the Blue Jays really value guys that can play multiple positions, guys that are athletic and not primary DHs. So if you're getting a guy like Michael Brantley, he's going to DH most of the time. I mean, and and there's no there's nothing wrong with that. He's a very good hitter. He's something that the Blue Jays have been wanting for the past 5 plus years. A lefty that can put the ball in play that does not strike out. But at the same time, you know, other He's players got a DH. George Springer's got a DH. Vladdy's got a DH. If you keep three catchers, one of them's got a DH. So it, it's hard, man. It's hard. And that's why I'm really valuing the defense and the roster versatility as opposed to a one trick pony like and, Michael Brantley. And that's a good point. If you're if you're getting Brantley, maybe it depends on what catcher they end up moving. 
because obviously yeah. Kirk is more of a DH, whereas if you're keeping Jensen and Gabby can play more around the field. But I don't know. We'll keep an eye on it. And the uh, just final thing, if you haven't kept up with the Kevin Kiermaier thing, he said he's going to try to go out there and try to make Ross Atkins look like a genius. I want to be an everyday player. So uh, I loved that quote out of him. And he's been um, like it. he's been phenomenal for the uh, for the Jays so far in the sense of how he's presented himself since getting uh, signed. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. But let's just get into the next topic. Let us know in the comments who would you prefer out of Gallo, Conforto, or Brantley. Uh, obviously, Conforto is a bit of a different situation. He's obviously the best player out of the three. But with the Kiermaier, uh, with the statements he's made, maybe uh, maybe it's not possible anymore. So, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. changing positions. Now, Peter, this is uh, this was interesting. And I saw it a few days ago. And we got a chance to touch on it now. So, this is in an article on The Athletic saying, To create even more malleability in their outfield, Gurriel will be prepared to play right field next season if needed. After the team converted him from an infielder to an outfielder, he's only ever played left field. But the team is confident his plus arm would fare well in right. If prospective players are more comfortable in left, having Gurriel as an option to make starts in right opens up more possibilities. And so this isn't really saying he's going to full-time change positions, but maybe the spot start in right field if, uh, you know, especially if, you know, maybe we get Brantley would make a bit more sense to give Springer some more off days or whatnot. whatnot. So what are your thoughts on uh, on that potential, uh, you know, right field shift? It never hurts to be able to play as many positions as possible. I'm, I'm glad Lourdes Gurriel is no longer an infielder. That was painful to watch. I remember he was a shortstop coming up yeah. uh, from the minor yeah. leagues and, and that was not a pretty sight to see if you're a Jays fan, but he's been okay in the outfield. He'll never be like uh, one of those top defenders, but he's got a cannon of an arm. And that's what you need in right field. Teoscar Hernandez had a cannon of an arm, but he was super lazy in right field. And and I don't want to dog on the guy. I wish him all the best in Seattle. And I think he's a great player. I think he's going to do great things in Seattle. But uh, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., I mean, his skill set plays tremendously to right field. Uh, I wouldn't see why he couldn't make the switch and give the Jays a little bit more versatility that we've been talking about this whole video. Yeah, I uh, I agree. And, you know, when you think of right field, if it was a full-time right fielder, the only, you know, knock on him would maybe be his power, especially with last year where his power completely fell off. Yeah. But if he's able to make some spot, spark, spot starts in right field, it, it gives a lot more flexibility for everyone. And maybe we have Gabby Moreno in the future making spot starts in left field, and maybe we go from there. So it creates a lot more flexibility, and I'm sure they're keeping that into account when the uh, when they're looking at what moves they're going to make. But it's very interesting, and he's never made a start, start there before, but his infield was a disaster. But uh, he, he's a he's a fine outfielder. <laughs> we don't talk about that. We don't talk about No, that. he's a you know below average at everything besides his arm, which, uh, you know, it is what it is, but he has a cannon. But let's get into the final topic of the video, which is... Uh, it's a very interesting one. Buck Martinez speaks out on both Rogers and the fact that he will be returning to the booth in 2023. So I have a couple screenshots to show you guys. The first one, Buck Martinez is preparing to return to the Blue Jays broadcast booth next season for, for his 36th year on the call. But someone will be missing in the seat beside him. And he went on to say this, quote, experience isn't valued. Consistency isn't valued. Loyalty isn't valued. Buck Martinez tells the McCallum podcast how he feels about Rogers getting rid of Pat Tabler, and he was not happy about it. Twitter was going crazy. Uh, he's returning, which is great, and uh, we didn't think that was going to happen, but it'd be without Buck, so maybe it was a decision between Dan and, and Pat, and they obviously chose uh, Dan. Yeah, I read that article, and it was actually a really good piece uh, on the Toronto Sun, but I, I really think that Buck Martinez has so much value as a color commentator. He's a former catcher, former manager. The, the guy is just a, a baseball lifer, and he knows everything there is to know about the game. Him and Dan Shulman have a great dynamic. It, I mean, what more could you want as a Blue Jay fan? I, I hope he sticks around for as long as he can, as long as his health permits him to. Um, it is sad to see Pat Tabler go. And in that article, Buck Martinez basically said, no one was more prepared than Pat Tabler. No one knew more about the game than Pat Tabler, and he will be missed. I mean, that's just that's just the way the world works today. Everything everything is about budgeting, and it, everything is about cutting costs. And it's unfortunate that it had to affect one of the one of the best duos to ever grace a baseball broadcast. But that's just the way it works. But Dan Dan Shulman and Buck Martinez definitely uh, definitely a great duo that we, that we got going on over there. Yeah, and having Buck back is huge, and I'm super excited for it. And obviously, Dan, you know, Dan's probably the best in the business or one of the best, and having him there is just obviously a blessing for us. But it seems like, you know, Buck was very upset, and I'm sure it was a business move. If they had to pick between, if I had to pick between Buck and, or sorry, Pat and Dan, I would pick, you know, Dan every time 
nothing against Pat. It's just, you know, Dan is just unbelievable. But Buck obviously is good friends with, with Pat Tabler, so he had some stuff to say. And kind of goes to show that clearly it wasn't a decision on Pat's part. He was blindsided by Rogers. Went on to say that as well, that he was blindsided yeah. and all that, which is That's really... what they made it seem like at first, too. Like, uh, Pat Tabler, they kind of made it seem like it was a mutual decision yeah. to part ways, but it turns out that that was not the case. And they made a choice. It was either Buck or Tabby, and I personally would go with Buck, but... Hey, Tab Tabby was a was a great contribution to the Blue Jays community. Yeah, and he's been, you know, he's been there forever. You know, best to him, and it's uh, at least we get Buck back. So that's the silver lining here is that we yeah. do have Buck coming back for hopefully what will be a World Series season or an exciting season at the very least. But that'll wrap up the video. We broke down a lot today. We will be going live tonight, so tune in for that if you're watching this video on the uh, on Friday the 16th. So make sure to to tune in if you want to. We'll be answering your questions, doing some trades, and keeping up to date on news. But you guys are the best. You guys have been subscribing like crazy. It's been unbelievable, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks.